do you think the, of the importance of software patents to the whole? I mean, several things here. There is free software. There is freedom of choice. There is free. Uh, well, there is the consumer rights movement, and there is all this uh, you know, interest of the consumer innovation, scientists, and uh, industry, and wealth, and you know, each each person is trying to advocate for a certain layer of you know things. Some people advocate for you know open internet, open Wi-Fi, and everybody's got their causes. And, and not everybody agrees on the same topic, but one thing loads of people agree with is that patents are uh, bad for innovation, they're bad for competition, uh, but inference they're bad for free software and all kinds of stuff. Uh, but what do you think overall the debate about software patents and patents in general should be? Because you, you don't seem to, to be interested as much as I am. No, I mean, I take it from a different angle. Uh, the the argument about software patents, all the all the arguments against the, uh, the validation of patents, I would completely agree with. Uh, it, there's very fair points made about harming innovation and stifling competition and ultimately end, affecting the end user. But this is the issue that I have with the whole topic in the first place. The end user is often the problem for why we're having this debate in the first place. If you look at the mainstream user, which probably is the, the user I'm most, most interested in, I advocate a lot of Linux and I deploy a lot of Linux, and the people I'm deploying it to are the average Joes, the ones that use the computer just to do their Facebook, their emails, and have no real concern or consideration of what lies under the bonnet, uh, to coin a phrase, or any of the implications that the software they're using is uh, what, what the future implications of that are. And I said the biggest freedom, and I've said this many times, the biggest freedom is of uh, the end user is apathy because 99% of the users that I come across have no interest in the implications of the software that they select. They merely want a result out of that software, be it a Twitter a client, be it whatever. And this is what we're fighting against. And I think the people that have the discussions about software patents, uh, should are they invalid, should, should, they, should there be such a thing as patents, really falls on deaf ears to the vast majority of people. The ones in the know argue, debate the subjects and make some very, very interesting points on both sides of the fence. However, these people are already in the know and have already made up their own minds and one group on one side of the fence isn't going to convince the other group and it goes round and round in circles. I think the answer is, for me anyway, is to highlight to the average user the benefits of the alternate choice, uh, for example, the, the free software, the, the ex example to the user what can happen um, when products that they love would be attacked or harmed by software patterns. For example, Android is probably the most uh, popular one at the moment that's, uh, that's coming under mainstream attack, as it were, and it's something that you can bring to the end user's attention. I do think that has to be patent reform. It also harms the economy. This yeah, is, of course. Uh, the, uh, there is a show from NPR, which despite despite NPR being partly funded by Bill Gates for its agenda, uh, they had a show called uh, This American Life, I believe, and this covers the impact of uh, of patent trolls on the economy in general. It's not really about software patents, but this is about the impact on the economy of a basically the leeching of society by tax and innovation. So every time you buy something that's considered to be novel. Or considered to be of some uh, purchasable, you know, merit or something. There will be a person up there who doesn't actually contribute to the work, just collecting extra income mm. based on uh, on derivatives or the patents. So this is one of the, uh, and, and some of them will be patent trolls, of course. And this is one of the distribution of wealth kind of debates. I suppose you could have, and then try to emphasize this to people. Is, if we if we allow people who aren't producing aren't actually trying to compete fairly to take all these extra money from selling products uh, to themselves, then this by basically by writing the right laws the way they want to, to write them, and this includes the United States uh, uh, patents and trademark office and all kinds of institutions they will be capable of legally trying to take money away from other people. And they will give it names like, you know, patents from old innovation, and they'll have those lawyers running around litigating people, you know, for stealing, you know, stealing ideas. And they will tell you that, you know, we have to defend American innovation, and we invented the, you know, 
And Edison invented the lamp, even though he didn't. He just like took somebody else's idea and extended it and filed a patent on it. So he was more of a businessman. And then I have all these myths about, you know, why we need patents and why we need to have those, uh, you know, grants and, uh, and applications, examiners in the patent office. And uh, people don't question this sufficiently. And one of the things the show was doing, it was bringing to people's attention, uh, probably millions of people's attention, the whole debate about patents. So ever since then, and I think it was, it, it was almost exactly a month ago, there have been, there's been this huge amount of articles against patents, like the New York Times, Washington Post, all the big, bigger, biggest papers, even the mainstream media, are calling for, at, at, the very, at the very least, the reform of the patent system, at this question in the system, and one of the things that happened about a week ago, I think it was last Tuesday, there was a court's decision um, which basically says that he just, just trying to call a patent uh, uh, an implementation with the computer of something which already basically exists in nature uh, doesn't make it meritable uh, for, you know, for a 20 year monopoly protected by the United States government. So this, in, in essence, means if you take the court a software pants, you have a better chance of trying to invalidate that and trying to throw many of them out. And this was a major uh, sort of victory, I suppose. I mean, again, this sort of highlights my, not concern, but my issue with discussing patents, because I think the opposers of and the champions of all have their own motives for doing so. I think they, well, they, they if, Quite clearly, you say, you say like it's a very equal kind of debate. Like well, I mean, it, it, lawyers who law before them. Oh, I mean, there's no, there's no doubt about it. The real winners in this, whoever owns the patents and whoever's uh, performing any sort of aggression with them, is going to be the lawyers. Uh, it's a win-win situation for them. But you know, you look at Google, for example, and they make a big fuss about software patents and all the harms and yields, etc. And whilst they've gone and engaged with this with most roller deal, and there's quite a few theories on what that deal was all about, but I, I think you hit the nail on the head when you you gave your views a few minutes ago. But where was Google when HTC was being attacked by Microsoft? Where was Google when Samsung was being uh, cornered by Microsoft? And it appears to me that if you're a company, it's maybe not ideal, but you fight fire with fire, and it's a little bit like we see around the world. Sadly, one country has nuclear weapons, so another country has to have them, not because they intend to use them, but because they want the threat there to use them if the other country uses them. And this is what perpetuates the whole patent uh, situation. Now, the only suggestion I would have, because I have very little uh, reading on patents, and to be fair, my interests lie in tech world in other other topics, but what I this is my sort of summary of my view to um, the best way that the patent reform. And I think the first step as I see it, would be that the first rule of having a patent is it's not transferable, it cannot be sold. I think that maybe, in my understanding of, of the patent system, would make a big difference to you how... To remain, you have to prevent people from calling it intellectual property. One of the issues we have in the UK, though, is that the office responsible for patents, you know what it's called, it's called the UK IPO, which is the intellectual property office, and when you call something like this a property, and you trick knowledge, not, not even knowledge on how to like create a, uh, uh, I don't know, a, uh, a printing machine or something, but actually knowledge of like, you know, how to press a button, or what does the button do, uh, and you make it seem like an asset, like you own this thing. I had this, this, this really long discussion with a friend about what ownership means and why, why people think that they actually own their car, for example, so you have to really go back down to fundamentals and ask them, why do you own this car? It's usually because you have the keys to the car and you are in, in, in a position to try and do the car the things you want, to take it where you want to take it. And people have extended this notion of ownership to all kinds of stuff, like owning the, the water, owning certain natural resources, which should be just public property. In the States now, I don't know if you noticed this, but loads of things that used to be public are being put in, in private hands on this kind of fake assumption and lobbying that you know, if everything is put in private hands and becomes a competition or something, or money market or something, things will be improved. What actually happens is you, you give monopolies to certain very few families, uh, you put a lot of power in the hands of very few people. You don't give anything, you, you, you give this notion of this person owns this and this person owns that, even on things that aren't supposed to be assigned to a person or to a family. 
But I mean, conversely, if we're talking about just to, it's slightly off off the subject, but just very roughly in the scope of what we're talking about here, if we're talking about natural resources being owned and companies being given. Some